Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this special edition of The Green Space on ESN. My name is David Song, and I'm pleased to be joined by my good friend Jonas Wieman. And today we are recapping for you last Saturday's Evergreen Fun in the Sun race. And if you weren't able to join us for that, we had 13 families uh, driving around Northwest Calgary uh, for about three hours or so completing various games, challenges, and timed bonuses. And Jonas, what an event it was. David, it was a blast. I really enjoyed it and we had some crazy Calgary weather going on. We had rain, wind, and sun during those hours. And by the way, if you're wondering, I was one of the camera guys sneaking around and taking footage of you guys, which we are going about to watch now. Absolutely. All right, so what do we got first, Jonas? All right, so first of all, we have archery going on at Dalhousie Church. Now obviously this was not your typical competitive archery setup. Uh, we had the big foam tips and the goal here was to uh, hit as many of these labeled cans off the table as possible in order to score points. But you had to make sure to avoid the discs placed next to the cans because if you hit those you would actually lose points. And so obviously our families had a few things to figure out here. Uh, first of all the draw strength of our bow surprised a few folks. Uh, just like members of the Spore family, uh, whom you can see right here. And as well, accuracy was a big adjustment for most contestants. Uh, Pastor Brad Hubert and his wife Shauna found that out the hard way at the top of the clip. But once our families got into a groove, uh, we did see some big shots go down. Oh yeah, that's true. And like, as you can see in the background, there are some horses sneaking around. And this is why we had horse leading going on at the same area, which we're gonna jump into right now. Now, the second activity we had at Dalhousie Church was the horse leading, and for that we were joined by a few members of the Camp Evergreen herd. Now, the key here was to partner up with one of your family members and lead one of the horses through a series of pylons. But the main challenge was, once you got to the end and had to turn the horse around, you were not allowed to switch sides with your partner. And so that really stressed and tested communication uh, between you and your partner, as well as the horse as well, keeping the animal calm uh, and making sure that it was able to proceed. And the young spore ladies here, they really came into their own. They, uh, they did very, very well on this activity and set the tone for how it should be approached. Yeah. And like at this time, I want to give a big shout out to Katharina Tovs and Dylan Peters who like cared about the horses, drove them from camp to the Horsey Church, like just take good care of them because like that's a really tough job to do. Absolutely. And we had a bit of a uh, horseshoe throwing there as well, just as a little side gig before we moved on to the next activity. Yeah. Now the third of our activities uh, for the day was of course the paper airplane toss. You had to make your own, you had to make it as sturdy as possible, and you had to throw it as far as possible uh, in the open. Now the key challenge here for our families was of course the elements. Uh, it wasn't so bad when the weather was cooperating, but like you said Jonas, we had a pop-up thunder shower on Saturday, yep. and we had some pretty stiff winds for some of the afternoon as well. So. Uh, not exactly an even playing field, but overall I would say a very impressive showing by our families despite all that. Jonas, what's the best paper airplane you ever made? So if you want to make the perfect airplane, I would go for the Concorde style. So a Concorde is a really fast flowing French aircraft, so it means you have to fold it very thin, very straight and very fast. And that seems to be the style of choice for some of our contestants and they definitely used it to great effect going into our next activity. The soccer drills. Of course, this yes. is the world's beautiful game, the most popular sport on the planet, and so we would have been amiss not to include it in our race on Saturday. And we had tons of brilliant young contestants uh, showing off their footy skills in the field next to the paper airplane toss. Uh, of course, at Camp Evergreen, we've got many uh, up and coming Bundesliga superstars uh, Max Meyer, uh, Lucas it. Cutler, uh, Bossman Lane Thielman, uh, even, even you a little bit, Jonas. Yeah, but I have to say, I'm more likely to be the, the guy who's like um, going into the crowd and just uh, chewing for the guys and just say, let's go, let's go, let's go. For sure. Now our next activity was the uh, not so eloquently named Huckaboo, Jonas. It was amazing. Yeah, so uh, it was simple, simple task here. You had to throw rubber boots and you had to throw them as far as they could go. But as everyone knows, uh, rubber boots very, very bottom heavy. And that meant technique matters. As you can see, the Jansen family here taking their cracks at it. Uh, if you didn't really hold on to that boot, it would very easily slip out of your hand uh, and it wouldn't be a very good throw. But if you held on too long, it would just go straight up in the air. And you really had to 
to balance that um, in order to get these very solid throws uh, we're seeing. Uh, here we have the Thiessen family, including uh, Father Keith Thiessen, a uh, longtime, uh, longtime Camp Evergreen supporter, oh, yeah. uh, along with the rest of his family, and of course his son Ethan. Now, Jonas, Ethan Thiessen, an up-and-coming baseball star, this kid's got an arm on him, and you just saw him use it there. Like, it was so amazing. I was filming this, and I was like, dang, he just he just throw it out of the air. And like, his... he did such a good throw. And here we have his brother, what's his name? Zach. Uh, like, Zach like, Zach is also throwing it pretty close to my car. <laughs> Obviously, we had all insurance. Like, all Absolutely. Around. Maybe next year we get some uh, nets up on that, but uh, overall, a uh, very, very uh, fun event, simple event, and uh, many families uh, did very well with this one. Yes. Uh, now, the blind obstacle course, Jonas, uh, this was a bit of an interesting one because, oh, yeah. as you know, siblings don't always trust each other, but here they really had to because one of them was blindfolded and it was up to his or her brothers or sisters to navigate them through this course of, uh, through this course of ropes and climbing obstacles. And uh, Jonas' teamwork, of course, was the name of the game here. Yes, it was. So I have four siblings, so I know what I'm talking about. And here you can see how it's really good to have one person to focus on and to listen to the commands that they're doing. And the younger siblings just jumping around and uh, cheering on you. Like, that was a very good technique. And here you can see she's really careful, while, like, crawling around the mm -hmm. ropes and not touching anything. And that was a pretty good performance. And I mean, uh, most families, of course, uh, they had some much needed practice uh, at this thing called teamwork, particularly between siblings. I wonder if the parents uh, were secretly thinking this is just what they need to <laughs> learn. But um, yeah, overall, uh, very, very impressive showing. And most kids, uh, uh, anyways, uh, definitely took to the meaning of teamwork here. Water balloons. We got water balloons, Jonas. You ever get smacked with these by your siblings? I do smack my siblings with them, so I'm filling it up and then waiting uh, on on their mm -hmm. like bats and just throwing it up. Well, a uh, little bit more finesse though required for this particular version of the activity. You had to toss water balloons using blankets as you see the hatch batch demonstrating here. And of course, you couldn't let the water balloon drop on the ground or else it would break. And you had to make sure you had that perfect weight on the throw, perfect weight on the catch, so the water balloon uh, would land exactly where you wanted it to. Uh, a modification of one of our rodeo favorites last year at Camp oh, Evergreen yeah, actually uh, where last year was even a little bit harder uh, campers had to pair up and just catch them using their hands at uh, distances of uh, over 20 feet and uh, definitely an interesting challenge here yeah and like you you saw a little like difference in techniques like some of the families were waving the, the towels and some mm -hmm. of them were just like throwing them over and like it was really interesting to see how different families mm -hmm. approach different techniques now, Jonas, uh, one of the most scenic activities uh, we had in our Fun in the Sun race was, of course, Nose Hill. But uh, our contestants were not just there to uh, see the sights and admire the beautiful Calgary skyline. No, they had to find our friend Caleb Thiessen somewhere on the hill. And uh, our other friend, John O'Hardock, uh, although he did give him a few hints, the hints alone were not going to get them there. They had to know how to use a compass. That's true. And like, I really enjoyed when I cut the interviews, like the parents were always talking about, yeah, no, so it was pretty nice. We got to hike there. And like the kids were like complaining about it because it was, yeah, we hiked so long and it was so boring. And as you can see here, all of the families or some of them had like funny costumes. We had like uh, Super Mario. We had some Pokemons. And here we have the Little Mermaids. Yeah, the, the, fish, the Fishers of Men, the Williams family. Uh, very, very good uh, team spirit there. And uh, kind of reminds me of professional golf where you're not just there playing the game. You have to walk a fair bit. And uh, we're no PGA Tour, but we'd like to think we put our contestants through their paces, pun intended. And that's all for now, folks. We'll take a short break and come back to run down the leaderboard. Stay with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you inside our broadcast booth and welcome, of course, back to the green space. David Song, Jonas Weeman here with you. And without further ado, let's get to our leaderboard for our Fun in the Sun race. Now, our first place family, Jonas, they really had it all. Oh, they yeah. had athleticism, yeah. brains, elite parental guidance. Of course, they had the consensus number one overall pick in the 2032 WNBA draft, Anna Thiessen. And in their own words, they had a lot of cuteness to boot as well. Yes. Their raw score was two hours and 50 minutes, but with a 52 minute time bonus, that got them under the two hour mark. At one hour, 58 minutes, Steph Thiessen and her family are winners. Congratulations to the Thiessens, like also from me. What a great performance. Let's move on to place number two. And second place, funnily enough, Jonas, is also 
a Tyson clan. Uh, and it turns out Ethan's big arm was not the only thing they had going for them. They had veteran experience and just a lot of familiarity with camp, along with a great mascot and yes. a very well-rounded skill set. And that's really what brought them home. Their raw score was three hours and eight minutes, but with a 67 minute time bonus, they clock in at two hours, seven minutes. It's Keith Thiessen and his family as our silver medalists. And like just to mention, 67 minutes of time bonus is massive and the biggest one that we got so far. Let's move on to spot number three. Absolutely. And coming in our bronze medal position, uh, Jonas, they may not have been the loudest bunch, yes. but they knew their way around horses and they knew their way around our fun in the sun course as well. Now their raw score just behind the Tsons, three hours and 10 minutes. And with a 57 minute time bonus, that got them down to two hours, 13 minutes. It's the Spore family coming in third. Congratulations to the Sport for place number three, the bronze medal. Also, thank you for everyone participating in there. Every family, every staff member, everyone who was building up stuff, keep it running. It was amazing. It was a good ev uh, event. We really enjoyed it. Absolutely, and uh, that about wraps up our show. Uh, I want to say thank you to all of our supporters, all of the loyal Evergreeners out there. And one more time for Jonas Weeman, uh, our leaders John Taves, boss man Lane Thielman, and the best dang people in the Bible camp industry. My name is David Song of ESN, and we bid you so long for now.